It's a song called Under Funny Clown, and uh, if you uh, listen to the lyrics there, he is no doubt who that song was written about. It was written about uh, his zoominess and uh, his cookery and thievery, and I see that uh, he was in court today, and they still can't get the guy nailed down. But uh, the man who wrote that song is with us this afternoon. His name is Craig Green, and he's the driving force behind that band, Bad Scooter. Good afternoon, Craig. How are you? Good afternoon, Richard. I'm very well indeed. A bit cold up in Johannesburg, but that's what it is. Well, you wanted to leave the valley. You wanted to leave. You said to me, you lived across the road from our studio and you wanted to leave the valley and now you've got the cold weather. Don't complain. We, you know, we don't care. You can't eat Table Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> and why did you move away? I uh, got an offer for a, a better job. Double my salary and a car. So I took it. Well, there we go. Uh, the music scene up here is not nearly as good as it is in Cape Town. You have so many more venues. People support local music so much more down there. They but do. here we are. We'll... Well, tell us about this uh, Bad Scooter because it's, uh, it's an interesting project. And you, it's somehow, maybe it's just my perception. You only really write songs when there's something that you want to say. Is, it, is that the case? Yeah, I'm not a a person who can write romantic songs or songs on cue. It's when usually the politicians give me the, the, the raw material and then, then it just comes out quite quickly. I mean, the uh, unfunny clown Jacob Zuma gets up and laughs and giggles in Parliament mm. um, and then the song, song appears and then you've got others with uh, Ibrahim Patel who says you can't, you you can buy long sleeve shirts, but you can't buy short sleeve shirts. Um, and just silly things like that. And suddenly there's a song in there. Yeah, it is. It is. And uh, the other song that I also find quite, because they're humorous. I mean, you do put a touch of humor in it. And uh, the public purse was another one of those. And that just speaks about the stealing of money, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, that starts, I mean, the last line is sauce for the goose and sauce for in Kandla. Mm. Uh, you know, if you, if you, if you want to take money, we should be allowed to take money as well. And yeah. politicians are there for themselves. They're really not there for us. Well, when have they ever been? They have, I mean, but that's not just this, that's any politician really, don't you think? I think so. There's a, there's a, I've just recorded another four songs that are busy being mixed and, uh, the, the, the politicians are there for power. It's all mm. about power, and it's really not about uh, bettering the lives of anybody else. They, they pay lip service to that, but they don't really do it. The, the thing is, I find that to be the case at the sort of upper level of, of politics um, and, uh, and down in, at sort of the lower ranks of, uh, of public service. You find that the people, or some of them are really very dedicated, but the minute that they sort of climb the ladder, uh, things seem to change. Uh, yeah, I think that's a function of the uh, electoral system that we've got, because mm. once you're in Parliament, the, you're, you're accountable to the party. Mm. You're not accountable to uh, the electorate, uh, whereas at local level, you've got um, ward councillors that are elected directly by the people. And mine in particular is a very, very good councillor who takes her work very, very seriously. And you can call her day or night if your electricity is not getting connected or whatever the case may be. So she's directly elected, and therefore she's responsible to the electorate. Mm. But proportional representation means you're answerable to the party, which means that uh, whichever party is in power, uh, effectively parliament will rubber stamp what the, what the party says. We've got a councillor like that here in the Valley. Her name is uh, Felicity Purchase, and uh, she comes on once a month to chat to us and tell us what's going on in the Valley and uh, that by popular demand. I mean, people actually contact us and said, listen, get her on the radio because uh, she's kind of a person who uh, takes time and trouble to listen to people and uh, takes time and trouble to try and solve problems. It can't solve all the problems, but she gives her the go. And uh, we're very fortunate. So I'm glad you've got a council out there and uh, that does the same. All right, enough about the politics, although it is a driver behind the music that you write. Tell us about this project, Bad Scooter. Where did it start? Uh, where is it going? Well, it's a couple of old people and a couple of young people. Uh, Bad Scooter is a line in uh, Surprise, Surprise, a Bruce Springsteen song. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, when he talks about himself, he uses who's the Bruce initials. Who's Bruce Now they've heard of this. Who's Bruce Dickinson? I don't think anybody's heard. Don't think anybody's heard of him. I think he's had one hit with Born in the USA, and that's about it. Yeah, I've um, never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's, he's a fairly major influence in the type of music that we play, and a lot of what he's uh, certainly his uh, "Darkness on the Edge of Town" album was really political, as were a couple of the of the more recent ones. Mm. So we just got a couple of old guys together and said, we want to play that sort of music mm -hmm. and we want to try and write our own stuff mm -hmm. and get people to like that. It's quite a, a, a long-term thing to get people to like the music that you play yeah. because they'll come, they'll come to a gig to hear songs that they know mm -hmm. and they don't know the stuff that you, you play because you haven't played it before. So mm -hmm. you've got to throw in a couple of the old long cool woman in a black dress whatever it is you want to play or born and in the USA <laughs> yep yeah, yeah, throw in the songs that 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 you've written mm. and hope that over time they start associating your songs with the songs that they like and they know yeah it's an interesting which is starting to work it's an interesting uh, concept uh, and the reason I'm teasing Craig about uh, Bruce Springsteen is uh, because uh, his, his Twitter handle is the biggest boss fan, isn't it? What's the biggest boss fan is your Twitter handle? That's what it is, yeah. He is, uh, the, I don't know that there's a bigger Bruce Springsteen fan in the world than uh, Craig Green and uh, so uh, that's why I'm teasing him. I was having an interesting uh, conversation with Mike McCullough from McCulley Workshop in this very studio. And uh, he said that, uh, I asked him about cover versions and the conversation that we're having now. And uh, his, uh, his take on it was you must play the cover versions, but then you must match yourself against those versions, which is what you try and do, don't you? That's, that's the way we try and do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I picked that up from, a, from Dave Grohl of Foo Fighters. He said, people come to your band to hear songs that they like. Mm. And eventually they'll start coming to your band because they like your songs. Yes. But it's a long process. And can, yeah. And you can get caught up in doing only covers. Mm. So you'll do a gig of 30 songs mm. and you'll do one, one of your own. And that's clearly not enough. So you've got what to like the, more. And, what is the formula you guys use when you perform in terms of ratio? Well, we, we basically try to, we put together a set list, which usually goes out of the window after about 10 minutes. <laughs> but it, <coughs> it's, we put together, we're going to play songs in this order. This is what the people are going to listen to. This is what they're going to like. But if you get them dancing, don't stop what's getting them dancing. Because uh, then you're going to lose them. So you mm. end up playing, all right, we're going to play this one at the end, but you end up playing it now because the people are dancing and you want to keep them on the dance floor. And then, you throw in one of your own and see how it works. Um, and if it works, you might throw in another one of your own later, or you might end up playing a lot of, uh, what's that guy, Bruce Springsteen. Oh, uh, oh yeah, it's, it's starting to ring a bell now. It's starting to, it's starting to ring a bell. Um, the music that you write though, and the music that we have certainly, our experience with Bad Scoots, and Bad Scoots has been sending us, uh, we all must be, Five years, Craig, at least. At That's least about that. five years, yeah. Yeah, at least that. Yeah. Um, and the first song we received was it Unfunny Clown. I thought, well, this, is, this has got to be played on radio. Um, but a lot of that kind of music is music that you actually need to listen to to really appreciate because it's in the lyrics. that There'll be melodies and they, you, know, you can dance them, but it's in the lyrics that the true meaning is found. Um, it, it's not really dance floor stuff, is it? Yeah, I think Unfunny Clown might be, but uh, Public Purse won't be. Don't mm. Lie to Me certainly isn't. You, mm. you, you're right. You have to listen to it. Yeah. And when we, when we do the mix, we're very careful to try and bring the voice right on top of the music rather than having the voice as an instrument in mm. the music because you need to hear the lyrics because the lyrics are what it's all about. I mean, the, the tunes are... Uh, the vehicle for the lyric. Offend anybody, but uh, you've got to listen to what's being said. Yeah. There's a new one coming out uh, about uh, xenophobia. Um, if you don't listen to the lyrics, the whole song's going to be wasted. Um, so you use the music as a vehicle to, set, to put the message across, and, and, and people should listen to, uh, to those words. Yeah. 
Uh, I often say when, I, when I'm playing tonight, you're going to hear some virtuoso guitar, but it's not going to be from me. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm by no means a great guitarist. My son is in the band and he plays the lead guitar. He can play the guitar and he can play it well. I can strum up and down mm. uh, and, and I can put the words down. It's really cool having your son in the band with you. That, that must be rather rewarding. Yeah, it is. And uh, the, the money we spent on his music lessons hasn't been wasted. <laughs> How many folk are in the in, in bad scooter, Craig? Uh, we've got five. We used to have six. Uh, my daughter-in-law went and uh, had two children, so we don't have a keyboard player anymore. But uh, we've got uh, two guitars, bass, drums, and uh, sugar lips on uh, the, the mouth organ. Sugar lips? Who's sugar lips? Sugar lips is a guy called Jeff Broom. But, uh, <laughs> When he gets that mouth organ, we call him Sugar Lips. He's very good with that mouth organ. He really can play that harp. He, he that can indeed. He, we play it through a distortion pedal or mm -hmm. a, a multi-effects pedal, so we mm -hmm. get different effects out of the out of the mouth organ. But he's really, really good. I mean, we can play uh, the introduction and part to Baker Street mm -hmm. on, on the mouth organ. That that takes some doing. Yeah, he's got a, a special. Uh, harp that he uses for that, how it works, I don't know. Mm. As far as I'm concerned, you blow in one end and you get sounds out the other, but uh, clearly it's more involved than that. Yeah, well, some people say that about my, my head, but anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's a kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> um, from a point of view of work, are you guys, okay, let's just exclude lockdown because that, of, of, of course, that has changed the game for everybody, but uh, work-wise, are, are you guys finding work up there? Uh, we get the occasional thing, and look, it's, it's what, you, what you put in is what you're going to get out. Mm -hmm. There aren't as many um, venues as good as what you have in Cape Town. I mean, you've got the couple in Nurduk, you've got a couple in, uh, in uh, you've got the Barley Corn. I played there in mm -hmm. 1976, and I played a solo there three or four years ago. Um, but you've got many places where you can go and play, uh, the, Cafe Rue, I think it's called, people will come in and listen. Yes. Um, over here, you've got to go and arrange your own gigs. So if you're not making a whole lot of money, you, you can't really go and afford to get an agent to go and do it for you. So mm -hmm. you go around to uh, the clubs and the pubs and if people say, well, play for exposure. You say, well, I'm sorry, I'll die of exposure. Yeah, but I, I need, I need, if we're going to play, you're going to pay. We're yeah. going to bring people in. Those people are going to buy alcohol if the government lets them and uh, they're going to spend money the least you can do is pay pay for us because if mm. you pay for nothing you ruin this you, you ruin it for everybody because mm. every then they say well so and so plays for nothing and well, then people who, who is this is their only source of income then get ripped off because they're getting paid less and less and less for the music that they're playing hey, Tom, uh, I must say that um, uh, there are a lot of venues, and uh, and I find generally those venues are looking after the musicians in terms of that. But I don't know too much about what happens up in Johannesburg, apart from what people tell me. Um, but it does seem a little tougher up there. There's a lot of bands, mm. um, and also a lot of venues. Um, I don't mind playing an audition for mm. a couple of beers and a hamburger each, but next time they've got to pay. Yeah, it's uh, not difficult. As far as uh, radio airplay, your your music, some of the stuff is is I wouldn't say controversial, but uh, how are you doing with with radio airplay? We don't get a lot. Uh, you su I submit to to many stations, mm -hmm. but a lot of the stations have their licenses. You know, you're not allowed to do anything controversial, mm -hmm. so um, they're quite nervous about some of the putting the songs on. But the, the internet stations, the, the uh, medium wave stations and so on, they're quite happy to, to play it. I, you know, I don't know why radio stations make that decision because everything that we have that by, by Bad Scooter is, yeah, maybe a bit controversial, but it's nothing but the truth and there's no foul language in it. It's not like it's offensive in that way. And I don't understand why radio stations would make that call unless, of course, someone else is pulling the strings. Yeah, I think you've got uh, 
people in charge of the playlist who say, well, this, this is not going on. We, we don't know why, where it would fit in. Um, it also, you, you know, if you want to make money, you've really got to make the money out of, uh, out of the live performances. You don't make mm -hmm. a lot of money out of no. streaming or plays. No, you don't and make... I put, I've, made, I've made $16 and 10 cents total out of the songs that I put up on uh, streaming services. That's big bucks. <laughs> yeah. Considering that it cost me six six zero as opposed to one six. <laughs> yeah, you do. The live performance is is what it's all about. And if if we do talk exposure, anybody that is playing you on radio is giving you that. Um, but it's mm. not costing you to do do that. I mean, you don't have to lug your gear to a radio studio, and you don't have to you know travel there and that kind of stuff. Uh, so the exposure that you get on radio can sometimes promote or, or, or help you get a live gig, or have you not found that to be the case? Uh, not, not so much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think given the fact that there's five people all with full-time jobs, we, we take what we can get when we can get it. So, you know, we may play a gig once a month, sometimes twice a month, but that's about the limit of what we get. Really, you should be playing every week. Mm. Um, and establishing a, a bigger following that way. Um, but getting together to perform and practice, how often does that happen? Well, generally, if, every Saturday morning, the neighbors get a free concert. Um, we, we meet in my front room and we play. At the moment, we can't. You can only meet, you, you could go to, a, I suppose you could go to a movie theater and practice there, but you can't practice in my home because then you'd be visiting people. And yeah, you're not allowed to do that. You can do it in a casino, but you couldn't do it in your own home. That that wouldn't be allowed. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a very clever virus because it knows the difference between a catwalk and a beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's uh, so, so the way some of it's been handled. Handled must give you so much material, particularly somebody who thinks like you do. Um, you must have so much material sitting there that you can work with. And the, the challenge is to get it out there while it's still relevant. Yeah. Uh, I think when I finish this discussion, I'll get hold of my, my engineer and say, what's happened to those songs? Yeah. Because there's two or three that are really relevant. And as soon as they are done, they will be relevant here on Zone Radio, I hope. Thank you very much. I will submit them. And if they're good enough, I'd appreciate if you would play them. Of course we'll play them. We've been playing your music for five, nearly six years, and it's not going to change now. I think that what you have to say is, uh, I had a conversation with somebody over the weekend, and they said, you know what, we want to listen to the radio, we don't want to hear anything about politics. And uh, my argument with them was, but you have to hear about politics, because out there in the world, there are people that are frustrated. And if there is somebody on a radio station who's expressing a very similar frustrated, frustration, they actually don't feel alone. And uh, I think that music can do that. It, can, it mm. can express the same kind of frustration as people are feeling and then they relate to that. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah, look, also there's, I mean, I did write a song, which was a happy song all about divorce called... Um, <laughs> Okay. called The End of Love. And it's, it's not autobiographical, it's merely observational. Um, but, you know, I, I, I find it very difficult to write pretty syrupy songs. We have The End of Love on there. When I got it, I thought, very different. Very different to what we were used to. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were straightening up, straightening up and flying straight. And I was a bit concerned. But then, then we got uh, Don't Lie to Me and then <laughs> put everything back into, <laughs> into where the box it belongs. Um, so the other the, the, the other four that are coming are purely in this in the line that you used to. They may not be as rock and roll, they may be more folky and so on, but they are certainly the lyrics are what you'd expect from Bad Scooter. Yeah, and uh, I think that Bad Scooter is saying a lot. Look through history, you're doing you're doing nothing different to what Bob Dylan did. Doing nothing different to what the boss did, Big Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Everybody thinks. Born in the USA, what a patriotic song. It's not. It's, a, it's an absolute dig at the United States and, and uh, the Vietnam War. So throughout history, musicians have had that voice. Um, and there's so many of them. We can, we can just go through the entire Buffalo Springfield, Joan Baez, Bob Dylan, Bad Scooter. <laughs> 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 uh, 
uh, Bruce Neil Young, Neil Young, all of them have have, and they've done that in in, in the most sometimes most subtle ways, and sometimes uh, the most in your face way. But yours is a more sort of somewhere between that subtle and in your face, which I find quite mm. clever. Well, it's it's the only way I can do it. I don't think I do it deliberately. Mm. It's that's the way the songs come out. We, we and I only write... know about five or six chords, so we use them over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, when, when you sit down with the song, where, where, what is your starting point? Is it is it the melody? Is it the lyrics? Is it a concept? Uh, do you guys get together to write? How does it work for Bad Scooter? Uh, I, I write them all on my own, and I say, here you are, guys. This is a song that I've written, and this is how it goes. Now, the I usually have on my iPad, a whole series of lyrics that are completely disjointed. I just write them down. Um, uh, you know, if there's a line in the, in the new song, there's a new day dawns, it's gray with a chance of misery. Um, <laughs> and I've, I've got that, I've got that line. Okay, so where does it fit in? And how, yeah. what sort of tune can I get around it? And usually, you'll find that the tunes are uh, you know, three chords here, three chords there, two more chords, and then there's a chorus, and somehow you force a bridge into it, and and you end up with a song. and And sometimes I've got three quarters of a song, and then I start another song, and I, I take for the part of the first song, and I put it into the second song, and you end up with two songs that uh, say something that you want to say. Um, so it's it's a you know, you'll wake up in the middle of the night and you think of something and I type it quickly on the iPad and I wake, I wake up in the morning and try and put it together in the song. Um, and it, it also depends on your mood. I mean, it, it, I've been quiet for a good couple of years because mm. I just mm. didn't feel like writing. So you don't put yourself under any kind of pressure to produce music because you are a musician. You, you feel that you're going to write something when you've got something to say. Yeah. Um, you know, and... Thank you, Ibrahim Patel. You've been very, very kind in this last little while. Well, the minister of silly hats, there must be something in there. <laughs> there, must be, there, yeah. must, there must be something. Uh, I, I think so. I might have to go get a couple of her lines and see how it would fit into. Well, we had the one, no. that, we had the one that it's Friday the day after Thursday. We had that one. No, it's, it's, that's, yeah. Yeah, we can use that. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the Minister of Silly Hat song. That one, <laughs> that one will definitely play. Listen, Craig, I wish we could chat all afternoon. I really do. It's uh, been. Oh, thank you for buying face masks. You wore face masks, didn't you? I did indeed. It's a way to improve my appearance. Is to put on a face mask and hides you, part of the face and makes you look better. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not going to argue with you there. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. <laughs> I, I, wore, I wore it today when I went shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there and agree with you. Why would I disagree with you? <laughs> Fortunately, it's radio. I've got a great face for radio. No, 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 no this has been video. This is going on YouTube, my friend. <laughs> Craig, uh, before I go, I, I want to thank you for this. I... Um, I want to thank you for the, 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 your loyalty to Zone Radio and the support that you have given us because there is this thing that I have about uh, musicians that a uh, radio station, it's a two-way street. Uh, the radio station will support the musician and we hope that the musician will give the radio station the same kind of support, i.e. if the song has been played or it's been featured and it's been tweeted, it's been retweeted by the musician or shared by the musician. Never once have we played a bad screw to song. Never once, where a tweet has gone out, a notification has gone out that your song has been played on Zone Radio, that you haven't acknowledged that and haven't retweeted it or shared it. And that to us is something very, very special. So we want to thank you for that support and assure you that as long as you are writing music and writing songs that have a message and have something to say, uh, we will be playing them. So uh, thank you for your support for, for this little radio station. Uh, it is deeply appreciated. And I get the opportunity today to say that to you uh, sort of face-to-face -face via Zoom. Um, but I want you to know that we really do appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for the platform for the songs. You're more than welcome, my friend. 
I'm going to play it out now with uh, the most the most recent song that you were sent to us. It's a song called Don't Lie to Me. And uh, the band is A Bad Scooter. Go check them out. You can find them on uh, Facebook. You've got a Facebook page. And uh, I had it here a moment ago, but I've got like three mice next to me here. So I'm looking to grab the right one. Um, am I right, Craig, Craig, saying A Bad Scooter Band Johannesburg? That's your Facebook page? Yeah. That's correct. Okay, so you can find them at Bad Scooter uh, Band Johannesburg and uh, go and like their page and go and explore their music. There is uh, some interesting, very interesting stuff. Last question before I go. I know it's expensive. I know it's probably not the way musicians are doing it at the moment, but is that album in the offering down the line? Uh, there is. It'll have to be self-produced. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're probably 10 songs into it. Okay. So you'd want to get get to around 14 yeah. before you put out an album. Personally, I think that would be a collector's item. And if that the album does come out, bet your life on buying one. Uh, Craig, thank you for your time this afternoon. And I uh, hope all goes well. And uh, that you're, you're starting a coffee business. Just tell us about that briefly. Uh, I bought a trailer. It's got a coffee machine on it. And I park it on the side of the road and I sell coffee. I want to tell you a story uh, about that. I want to tell you a story about that. Like there was a guy here that did that, um, and he did that. You know the area. He did that across at the uh, Shell Garage, um, yeah. at uh, where, where the Shell uh, Garage is, and he started there. Today, uh, it, it grew into a coffee shop, a full-fledged coffee shop, and today it's a beauty. Mm -hmm. So there's hope for that, and I hope that you do very, very well because coffee is something that people uh, are passionate about. And I'm sure that uh, once the regulations are lifted and you can you can operate the way you need to. I'm going to, you're going to be as successful at that as you are at writing incredible music. Thank you very much. All right, that is Craig Green, and uh, he is uh, from the band Bad Scooter. Uh, we're going to play out with uh, the song called Don't Lie to Me, and uh, go and check him out, and uh, hook up with them, and uh, download the music, and uh, support South African music. Here's a Don't Lie to Me. Yeah, well.